they will be at 2.5 rupees per square foot and 5 rupees per square foot. A zone, that means that the most developed zone. Any house that's coming at the end zone, that is the least developed zone. This is called per square foot. Hope this is clear. So now coming back to the calculation, what happens is once we determine the zone, well, my house don't. And as I told you, zone E means, and I live in my own property. I have not let it out uh, for any tenant. For me, it is 1.2 rupees per. You can calculate depending on whichever zone you are and with whether you have whether you're uh, as a owner living there or whether you are let it out on rent. The it can be calculated from here. Uh, yes, Srikant, sorry to interrupt. Uh, some of the participants are saying that the audio quality is poor and they're not able to hear you. Okay. Okay, what I will do is I'll probably just log in from another my phone. Or you may want to turn off your video, that will improve. Okay. Try that first. Okay. Uh, is this better for people? Yeah, right now it is uh, good. So continue, then we'll see in a few minutes. Were you also hearing an audio poor audio quality when I was talking? Soumya? Yeah, you can continue now. No, uh, where was my audio quality poor for you also and has it improved for you? Uh, yes. I was about to actually checking if others having the same are uh, having the same problem. That's when I realized. I think it'll be better now if you turn off the video. It might be just the bandwidth thing. Can you just continue? No, no, I've already turned off. So, can yeah, some well, Let's uh, continue for some time. Uh, people are saying, yes, audio quality has improved. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sonia. So, I'll repeat. Uh, my house is an land area of 675 square foot. My floor area ratio is 2.5, which means my bed up area uh, is 1660 square foot. And that is my uh, the area in which I live in, that's my house. My house is in zone E. I live, I'm the owner and I live in my house. So far, it's very clear. Right? Now comes something called this value. So unit area value is nothing but month. And BBMP applies this rate for 10 months and not 12 months. They give a discount of two months effectively. So one two rupees per square foot. On that, they apply uh, what is called as a discount rate. So they apply a 20% rate. Very simple terms. Whatever rate put you get, multiply that by T, you get value. If your rate per square foot is 3, the value will be 60 rupees. The rate is 1.5. The value will be. Uh, Shrikan, sorry to interrupt again. I think there is no significant improvement. You may want to try the other hack that you were speaking about. Yeah, I'll just join from my mobile device then. Is this any better? There's an echo. Uh, you'll have to, otherwise the quality is better. Okay, is this better now? Yes, I can hear you well now. Wonderful. Yeah, I think there's some problem with the laptop. Um, so what I will do is I will use the a laptop for speaking and the or rather the mobile for speaking and the laptop for yeah, showing yeah. the screen. Yeah. Okay. So effectively what I was saying was if the rate per square foot is 1.2, you just multiply by 2 to get your unit area value. That is 2.4. And there is a depreciation uh, of 3% that is currently allowed. And the 3%, it's not per annum, it's a lump sum amount. That is whether your property is 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years, it doesn't matter. The rate is 3%. 
that is allowed as depreciation. So with this, let's understand how is my property tax calculated. It's a very simple calculation. We have this built up area, 1660, that multiplied by the unit area value into 2.4 into 97%. That is depreciation 3% means 100% minus 3% is what will be taken. So 1660 into 2.4 into 97% comes to 3864 rupees. In fact, it's 3864.48 to be precise. That is what comes in my property tax. And that is the exact calculation here. So the property tax that I have to pay is 3864. And each of you can do this. You take your built up area that you have declared. You multiply it by the unit area value based on the zone that I just told you. And multiply that by 97%, you will get your property tax payable. And on that, BBMP applies a cess of 26%. That is 26% on 3864. That is 1,005 rupees. And then on top of that, there is a solid waste management cess at the rate of 30 rupees per month. That is 360 rupees per annum. All of this put together is 5,229. Of course, we all know that if we pay any amount uh, before the end of April, at the beginning of the financial year, we get a rebate of 5%. So if you pay by the end of April, sometimes they extend it to May also. If you do that, then we get the rebate of 5%, 243 rupees. And the net payable for me, last three years, I've been paying this 4,986 rupees. So this is what I pay currently as property tax. This is a calculation that all of you will be having, which you will be paying. I'm going to take a pause here. Uh, yeah, so let me quickly uh, ask answer some questions. Uh, people have asked, why should we multiply two to, uh, two to the rate to get unit area value? Is unit area value twice the rate for all zones? Uh, so Srinivasan, it is indeed twice the rate for all zones. And why do we multiply by two? is the formula is this. Whatever is the rate per square foot, that is per month. Ideally, it should be mu multiplied by 12 months to get the total for the year. But BBMP says, we'll give you a discount for two months because you might be undergoing some renovation or something. We give you a leeway of two months. So we'll charge you only for 10 months. So that is 1.2 into 10, that is 12. And as per the BBMP Act, the amount of property tax you can charge is only minimum of 20%, maximum of 25% on the rate. Whatever rate they fix, they can only charge anywhere from 20 to 25%. So they charge is 20%. So that rate into 10 into 20% is what becomes two times. That is why it's multiplied by two for simplicity's sake. But the actual calculation is the rate into 10 months into 20% will give you the unit area value. Umesh Madiwal has asked a question, what could be the max FAR we can construct? It again varies from zone to zone. In fact, recently, the government has passed a new act where they have increased the FAR across the city, uh, in quite a few places. Uh, so if the FAR is 2.5, they define the FAR for different areas. So if, if your FAR is 2.5, whatever is your land area, you can multiply that by 2.5, and that's the maximum you can construct. In some areas, the FAR could be 3. So for example, if your land area is 500 square feet, if your FAR is 3, the maximum built-up area you can construct is 500 into 3, which is 1,500. So that is the logic for the FAR. Uh, again, Umesh has asked, how do you get UAV as 2.4? It's simple. Unit area value, my rate is 1.2 rupees per square foot into 10 months, that is 12. And 20% of that is 2.4. That is the calculation. Now, uh, is 3% depreciation applicable every year? No, as I said, it's not applicable every year. In the current system, it's applicable as a lump sum amount of 3%. So whether your property is 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, all of you get only 3%. So that's why the built-up area into the unit area value into 97% is what will be your property tax payable. In case anybody wants to uh, raise, uh, uh, whoever has raised their hand if they want to ask a question on this first. Right now on the current system, I am happy to take any questions. Soumya, uh, can you unmute anybody who wants to ask a question?
Okay, there is Suresh Govindra. Suresh, do you have any question relating to the current system? Or if not, we'll come back to you later for something. I see quite a few hands going up. Or Dayanand, next is, uh, I can see Dayanand, yes, sir. Dayanand, you can unmute and you can ask your question. I request people, if there is any question that you have relating to the current system, please uh, ask your question. Otherwise, I'm going to cover a lot of other things also. Okay, or Vivek Chand, uh, I've allowed you to talk. Do you have any question yeah, hi, on the current property tax? Yeah, hi, Vivek. So you have given a concept, land area, built-up area, floor ratio, FAR. Now, yeah. FAR might be what is given by the government. Correct. Now, either I have constructed less or more, okay? Now, let's say mm -hmm. in your case, you kind of have more or less two and a half. Yeah. I could have constructed 1.75 or I could have whatever over constructed and done three and a half. So yeah. what am I taking? What should I take so into legally, account? Action? Legally, you should not have. Yeah, legally, nobody is allowed to construct beyond the FAR. Correct. But ultimately, what you declare in the property tax system is built up area. Right now, okay. the system doesn't ask you how much of land area yours is. It just asks you what is your built up area. Whatever you declare, that's what they take. Okay, so FAR is there just for this thing, but actually we are, are calculating on built-up area. Correct. I just gave you as an example so that people understand land uh -huh. area becomes relevant in the new system. Okay, that is okay. why land area is there. I'll shortly. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody has any questions relating to the current system? Whoever has raised your hand, you can unmute. I can see Srinivas and Ramaswamy has unmuted. Any yeah. question on the current system? Yeah, yeah, I just had a follow-up question. So, uh, yeah, in the case of tenanted property, therefore, uh, the UAV is four times. Uh, is that how it works? It's a straight calculation. Two times. It'll be two times. For yeah. example, uh, but the rate current... is twice of the normal rate. So, I'm assuming that's how it is. Ah, right? correct. So, for example, my in my case, you're seeing two, UAV as 2.4, right? Yes. If I had let it out on rent and there was a tenant living here, I would be paying 4.8, not ah, 2.8. Okay, so it's one point. So if 1.2 is a reference, it's four times. That's right. Correct. That's right. Ah, yeah. correct. You're right. Right, correct. right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hello. Anybody else has any question yeah. on the current system? Hello, yeah. Shrikan. Yeah, Srinivas. Uh, yeah, good evening. Uh, now, one thing is, uh, I was going through your uh, calculation. It is uh, really very useful. Uh, regarding the depreciation, uh, 3% is uh, minuscule. Uh, in fact, uh, even in uh, when we do the income tax filing, you know, year on year, you know, the, the depreciations uh, as they, uh, either whatever the equipments or anything gets older, it should increase. Okay. It should not uh, remain stagnant. As you said about uh, a 10 year old or a 30 year old or a 50 year old, uh, depreciation cannot be same. This yeah. is something which we'll have to uh, point it out. Correct. Uh, that is so. The current system. I'm just trying to explain what the current system yes, is. I yes. agree with you. Yes. The concept of depreciation is it should happen every year, right? Yes. But in the current system, there is a, a one fixed three percentage, irrespective okay. of the age of the Correct. building. Now, why Correct. is it done that way? Even I don't know, right? Since <laughs> I know we are not involved in devising that system, but no, in their no, no. logic, we they are have done involved. it. She can let me on. Be honest. I'll yeah. tell you. Uh, no, Srinivas, what we will do is, I think, a lot of, you know, first, let's finish the session, okay, right? Fine. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, fine. Then, yeah. you know, a lot of things we need to discuss, right? <laughs> so, first, yes. you know, let's quickly get on with all the questions. Shankar sure, Punjabi sure, sure. also fine, fine. unmuted. Please, please yeah. go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody yeah. has any other questions uh, in the current system? Hello, can you hear me? Can I speak, sir? Shankar here. Yeah, uh, Shankar and Anand. Okay, why, Shankar, why don't you go first? Yeah, Shankar, quickly. Yes. Yeah, this depreciation, what you're telling, 3%, there is a slab yeah. table given, 1 to 3 years, 3 to 5 years, 10 years, like that. Up to 21 years, there is given, sir, in that guidance book value, and SS was adapted in the year. So I think we have to follow that, not just 3%. For more older the building, when it was adapted, at that kind of slab is given. But, uh, but after that, it is stagnant. It doesn't change with the, every year. Like what somebody uh -huh. pointed out, like income tax, it doesn't go on increasing. But it is constant, but there is a table given, sir. If I No, Shankar, sure, actually, okay, you can just check. Uh, as per what I have seen in the SAS system and as per my own calculation, right? Okay. My apartment is 15 years old, right? Okay. okay. I get only a 3% depreciation and I haven't, I haven't seen anything in the law order that was passed uh, in 2016, yeah. anything yeah. that reference to a table on depreciation. But I'm happy yeah. to stand corrected. I can assure you that in my apartment, every year, 
I've been paying the same amount and it's the same depreciation. It doesn't change. But I'm happy to stand corrected if somebody else can show uh, how it's being calculated. The current system, the way it calculates is it takes 3% as a standard number. If there's a table that you have seen somewhere, I've not seen it anywhere. Uh, you can send it to me separately on your group or uh, to me through WhatsApp or to uh, 8095130000. Uh, I can, I I'm happy. I will share with you the screenshot of the table given in the SAS booklet, sir. Sure, no problems at all. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Anil, you were asking something. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Shrikan. I don't know how this question is uh, relevant, but uh, what if it is a super built up area? How do we no, come? No. This built up area is a is actually super built up area only. Okay. In BBMP parlance, in the SaaS system, it's called as built up area, but for all practical purposes, it's super built up area. It covers your car park, any garage, all closed spaces, right? Anything and everything that you have, right? There are some exclusions that are given also. But for all practical purposes, you can assume that this is super bit. Okay, so whatever is there in that sale deed or something, the final yes. uh, figure that has to be taken here, right? Correct, correct, including your car park, garage, mm -hmm. and any other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. No problem. Uh, yeah. Shall I? Shall I? Yeah. Subaram. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, I understand. Uh, uh, first of all, good evening to Nasiman and all of uh, all of you. Uh, see, my question, uh, two questions. One is, I learned from your uh, uh, clarifications that 3% is not cumulative, but it is a uh, lump sum each year. Number one. Not each year. It's 3%. Irrespective of the number of years, it's 3% only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not cumulative because the building uh, goes on depreciation. It's, uh, the term depreciation itself uh, will reveal that it's uh, cumulative. But here, no, no, I agree with you, Subara. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. What I'm saying is the current system, the way it calculates is your property might be one year old, my property might be 15 years old. For you also, you get 3%. I also get 3% only. I don't get 3% oh, into 15 years, which is 45%. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And that uh, second question from me is, see, if it is uh, rented out, how... Oh, see, sometimes it may be vacant. See, in a year, two, three months, it may be vacant. How can we establish that uh, these three months it is vacant and the rest of the period is rented out? Yeah, these are all some complications that come in. Usually what happens is at the time of declaration, based on whether, see, by the way, if it's vacant, you don't, you know, it means it's not tenanted. You can say you are living there, right? If you are effectively, the system is that if you are making money out of it, uh, through letting it out, they charge you double the rate. Uh, but it's whatever it is you declare at that time. Uh, so uh, there is a uh, technicality here. Every time in April when you pay the property tax, you might not have a tenant and declare that it's untenanted and then keep paying it at this rate. Uh, so I even I don't know what they do in such scenarios. I don't think it's explicitly stated. The system asks you whether it's owned or tenanted. And based on that, it gives you. So it depends on what you declare. So okay, these are all some gray you. areas which are there. Yeah, yeah. The gray and the dark areas to be explored yeah. by the BBMP sure. itself. Okay, thank yeah. you. So we'll be running short of time because we still have a lot of ground to cover. Let me move to the new system now. Uh, what is the new system proposed by BBMP or by the Chief Commissioner in the draft notification dated 20th February 2024? This is the new system that we are talking of. Whatever you are seeing getting highlighted on the screen. So let me explain to you what this system is. There is something called as a guidance value, which is determined by the state government. And this keeps changing from time to time. This guidance value is effectively a proxy for the market value of your property. What used to happen earlier was people used to under declare their market value. For example, if your market value or let's say you are selling your house to somebody at 5,000 rupees per square foot. What people used to do was, people used to claim or declare that I'm selling it at 1,000 rupees per square foot. And the rest of the 4,000 rupees per square foot, they used to take it in cash, which is a system that we all know, right? A lot of property dealings, there is black and white. The cash part is the black part and whatever is declared is the white part. So to curb this system or to curb this uh, uh, way of doing things, uh, because of which, you know, the government was not getting the uh, right share of stamp duty registration and taxes. So they introduced this guidance value system where 
they try to bring the guidance value as close to market value as possible which means irrespective of what you declare at the time of a sale you have to pay stamp duty registration and taxes at least at the rate of the guidance value for example my apartment guidance value is 6000 rupees now at the time of selling if i declare that i have sold it for 4000 rupees i don't have a choice but to pay tax stamp duty and registration at 6000 rupees so the guidance value has been brought to evade the tax you know or rather to curb the tax evasion and also to ensure that there is more money coming into the tax system this was the logic now they are introducing the guidance value as a proxy for your property tax also and i'll shortly tell you how it is calculated interestingly uh, guidance value there are some documents available on the uh, registration website where you can go and see there are pdf documents that you can download my apartment is not listed there but i think based on my neighboring apartment's uh, guidance value which is listed there it's about 6000 rupees per square foot so guidance value is one important measure that we need to understand then there is something called as construction cost that is defined in this new notification that is a fixed 1500 rupees for all residential properties uh, whether your house is in rajarajeshwari nagar or pinya or hebal or uh, bomanahalli or mahadevpura it doesn't matter construction cost is taken as 1500 rupees for everybody guidance value changes from place to place there are some places where the guidance value could be 20000 rupees some places where it could be 2000 rupees some other places 8000 rupees so on and so forth now they have introduced a concept of depreciation same 3% but in the new system they have introduced depreciation per year at 15 uh, at uh, 3% per year subject to a maximum of 60 percentage now in my case the age of my property is 15 years uh, it was constructed in hand over in the year 2008 Uh, of course now 2024 when i pay tax it will be 16 years so when i declare this year it will be age of property will be 16 years right so these are some numbers that you need to understand now let's look at how is the property tax calculated so there are two components to the property tax in the new system one is arising out of the land the other is arising out of the building so simple what they do is they take your land area multiply that by your guidance value and multiply that by 0.1% 0.1% now if it is tenanted it will be 0.2% even in the new system own property means if you pay x tenanted property you have to pay 2x so depending on whether it's owned or tenanted land area into guidance value into 0.1 or 0.2% will give you the property tax arising out of land in my case it's owned so it is the land area of 675 square feet into the guidance value of 6000 rupees per square foot into 0.1% that comes to 4050 rupees if it was tenanted it will become 8100 double of this but since it's owned property i pay this much or rather i'm supposed to pay this much then there's a property tax arising out of the building that is nothing but your built up area which is 1660 square feet into your construction cost that is 1500 rupees per square foot into 0.1% again here again if it is tenanted it will become 0.2% so for me the 60 1660 square foot built up area into 1500 rupees per square foot into 0.1% is 1000 to put together a uh, total property tax payable is 5420 rupees and compare this with what i am paying currently i pay 3864 rupees currently that is expected to go to 5420 rupees and that means my property tax is increasing by about 40 percentage i repeat my property tax is going to go up by 40 percentage uh for different people it's going to be different you are seeing this number 5420 the incremental beyond 3864 is a 40% increase what they have done is they have capped they have said okay if it goes beyond 20% we will cap it at 20% so what will happen is in my case i will pay 20% higher than 3864 this year and next year i will come to 5420 every year 20% will keep getting added to catch up to this rate of increase rest of the things remain same 
sales will be at 26%. So sales at 26% on 5,420 is 1,409. Solid waste management sales remains as before. Total payable to me will come to 7,189. Uh, rebate, of course, might still remain the same. I don't know whether they're going to change it or not. So my net payable is increasing by 40%. For different people, it could be different. For some people, it could be 5 to 10%. For some people, it could be 20, 25. For some people, it could be 40% like me. For others, it could be 70, 80% also. Because guidance value, it varies and it keeps increasing all the time. And in a city like Bangalore, where the property prices continuously keep increasing, but the quality of amenities do not keep increasing, the your property tax year on year can keep going up very significantly. Now, if any of you have any questions on this new system, I'm happy to answer those. Somebody has asked, is 3% depreciation applicable every year? So it is in the new system, it's applicable every year. In the old system, it was not applicable every year, right? So uh, I hope that uh, uh, clarifies the question I see on the Q&A window. So now, uh, any of you who have raised your hand, you want to uh, talk, uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. But right now, please ask your question only if it relates to the new system. Yes, Hi. Yeah, Vivek. Uh, uh, yeah, quickly, sorry, where Vivek. did the where, where did the depreciation come into picture? I didn't uh, I didn't see you calculating the depreciation. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I'm completely sorry about that. Uh, the depreciation is uh, applicable on the building value. Sorry Only the building, that. nothing on the land. On the not on the land value, it's on the building value. Yeah, thanks That's for it. pointing that out. Effectively, my house is 15 years old. So my eligible depreciation is 45%. 15 years into 3% is 45%. So the uh, built-up area of 1,660 into mm -hmm. construction cost of 1,500 into uh, for, uh, 55%. That is 100 minus 45%. So 55% is what it is applied. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out, Vivek. I completely missed that. Sir, basic uh, question. You yeah, are yeah. talking about uh, uh, the built-up area uh, should be inclusive of for car parking, garage, etc., right? Yes. But if I remember, when I fill this uh, property tax form, mm -hmm. there is a separate section for car parking as well. So do we still have to include car parking in the built-up area? Because my built-up area, whatever I mentioned, was as part of uh, the sale deed agreement. Right? Sure. So for example, as per sale deed agreement, uh, my uh, apartment square feet is 1200 square feet. Right? Yeah. And car parking is uh, around uh, 150 square feet. Yeah. So should I have to declare my built-up area as uh, 1350 square feet or 1200 yes. plus 150? 13, it should be 1350. Oh, but so far I have been declaring uh, like 1200. Is it, uh, uh, can we change yeah. it now? You can change it now. Uh, so, uh, you know, every year you uh, you declare, right? It's uh, the SAS system, the full form of SAS self-assessment scheme. So mm. it's as per what you declare. If you declare 1200, the system will calculate on 1200. If you declare 1350, you will calculate on 1350. So from here on, you should uh, add all of that and uh, uh, apply it. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Shini, you are asking a question. Shini Vedula. Why don't you go next? Uh, yeah. Srikant, basically, there are two things. Uh, number one, my building itself is more than 40 years old. So yeah. by the new rule, I should be I should be getting a depreciation. <laughs> no, no, no. That is, they have declared, it's up to a maximum of 60%. So if your building is 40 years, you will get a 60% depreciation. Hello? Uh, Shini, I'm not sure whether you're still there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I just to uh, clarify yeah, I mean, for everybody, the maximum allowed depreciation in the new system is 60%, which means if your property is 20 years or more, your depreciation will only be 60%. Yeah, Subara, you're asking a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, understood, understood. Maximum 60%, uh, even the building is collapsed also, the 40% tax will be there on construction cost. Correct. Oh, thank yeah. you. 
does anybody have any questions on the new system or even the old system comparison etc karthik you can ask your question yeah she can very quickly two questions so uh, in case of a flat in apartment i think uh, the land area is the uds that's number one right. question second is in the in the new system uh, since you say depreciation is allowed every year so if if let's say a building is 7 years old so from 8th mm -hmm. year next year will be 8th year when i'm paying the new system assuming for a moment so that 7 yeah. years depreciation will already get calculated is it yeah that is you when you are calculating property tax at that time right if your okay. property is 7 years old okay you apply a depreciation of 21% 7 okay, 7 years all right. all right got it year, when you complete 8 years you apply 24% on that so year on year you keep increasing the depreciation by 3% all right all right all right yeah and yeah Thank in you. the case of uh, flats uh, uh, the uds now by the way in the new notification those things have not been clearly laid down uh, right now let me also put in a caveat uh, it says the uh, a uh, flat area is what it says in that i would think that it will be uds for uh, undivided share of land for apartments and the land area for individual houses uh, but in case there's a change we will wait and see but i think this should be the broad understand i have yeah, a quick uh, question if I, if i just just uh, sorry for interruption uh, yeah, if uh, i Subhara, yeah. if yeah frank if, you can go next let let frank go next yeah subara value depends on the uds sorry land value no you are in apartment in an apartment that's what what happens is in an apartment let's say an apartment could have been constructed on let's say uh let's call it 50000 square feet of land and let's say there are uh, 100 owners in that uh, uh, apartment uh, not all of them will get the same share uh, but assume that every flat is the same size uh, okay. each of them will get a 500 square feet of undivided share of land okay. so your land area would be 500 square feet roughly so for that 500 square feet uh, the guidance value has to be calculated correct that's right oh thank you yeah uh, yeah. yeah i have a question yeah you yeah. mentioned frank goes yeah. next uh, you can ask your question next frank can you ask yeah. yeah you had mentioned that in your case between the current and the proposed one you are actually going to have 40% but you mentioned something about it is going to be only 20% now and later could you please elaborate a little on that so what the notification says is that uh they have they are capping the increase at 20% every year so which means let's say if my increase is working out to 10% i end up paying the 10% but if my uh, increase in property tax compared to the previous system it let's say going to 40% like in my case i calculate only uh, the system will cap it at 20% so system knows that i was paying at 3864 earlier it will apply a 20% increase to it this year and whatever that amount is i pay this year and next year there will be another 20% on that by which time it will come to 5420 uh, and that's how uh, it increases and for people for whom let's say it goes up by 60% the increase will catch up over a period of 3 years this year 20% next year 20% the year after the 20% so the entire change is not affected overnight uh, they are trying to effectively give us some leeway is what they are saying that if your tax goes up significantly we will cushion it by capping it at 20% every year i hope that answers your question yeah thanks it's very clear thanks yeah shrinivasan you can go next yeah Uh, sorry and i have three short questions sorry the, so the, the 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 first thing is how do you decide the age of the building especially you know in in an apartment occupancy uh, certificate the from the, the day the occupancy okay it's the occupancy certificate date is that even if you have occupied it two years later yeah it is the occupancy uh, of that entire uh, project correct yeah that, that is the time the khata start getting issued Okay. uh gata might not be in your name but it's still the uh, uh, whoever is the original owner which could be the landlord or the builder himself right yes yes the gata yes. is issued at that time effectively okay so it is the age will have to be calculated or you can say on the date of the issue of gata effectively okay 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 so that's what it is and and therefore whether uh, or rather let me clarify uh, again when you ask me this this is what my presumption is but having said that these things have not been detailed out exactly and specifically there are buildings that do not have occupancy certificate 
uh, there's a B khata given after some time. Now, in the case of occupancy certificate not given, what happens? Those complications even I'm not sure because the uh, notification does not mention any of that. So right now I'll go with the simple philosophy that from the date of issuance of the khata is the age of the building that should be calculated logically. Okay, and that and that is the first builder khata, not necessarily the owner's khata, correct? That's the original khata, correct. Yeah. After that, the and khata therefore, can keep changing hands. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, even if it's a resale, it doesn't matter uh, because correct. the original kata date is what is relevant, correct? Exactly. Okay. That, that's the age of the building. It's the age of the building, right? Not the age of the how building, not nothing to do with the ownership. Okay. Yeah, nothing to do with how many years you've been owning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. And the other one is, yeah. you know, uh, normally in a, in a complex, and ours is also a reasonably large one, I always find that people are putting different zones. So is there one definitive source which says this is the zone applicable? There seems to be always a confusion. So oh, I know, uh, Srinivasan, it's a, it's, a, it's a big, big mess that's been going on. Uh, we have taken it up and we have told them how to solve for that problem also. But all mm -hmm. that I can say is that uh, if they have even 5 to 10% of the, uh, the sense that each of us citizens have, uh, BBMP and our city will be in a much better position. That's all that I can say. Let's leave it at that. I don't want to, you know, go go okay. beyond that, right? Currently, the, the system and the people are truly horrible there. Yeah, just to hear uh, one uh, small... But you're right. Just to answer that question, people living in the same apartment should be in the same zone only. Yes, yes. There's no logic to same apartment, different people being in different zones. But the current system, that's what it is. So there's nothing that we can do about it. We have to live with that. And but that's a separate topic. We, we today we can't cover that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to hear one small oh, clarification, a... Narsimhan. Yeah. Hello. Uh, there are actually yeah. a lot of people. Uh, you know, others. Uh, there is a uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just uh, only one question. See, the khata issue is a different. Uh, occupancy certificate uh, issue is a different. Kata uh -huh. might be issued before start of the building itself. Okay. Uh, if, if that's the case, then let's go with the occupancy certificate. My understanding was that the Kata yeah, yeah. officially uh, gets course. issued upon completion of the project. Right? No. Uh, so, yeah. but for all practical purposes, the occupancy certificate. See, whenever BBMP says your building has been completed officially, and that is the you know, occupancy certificate that they issue. Right? So uh, leave the khata out for now. Take completion certificate as the date. But as I said, this is my guess. Uh, the notification doesn't explain that in detail. Uh, let them come back with uh, those later on in their final notification or we can even get these things clarified later on. Okay, this is one of the gray area. Right yeah, now. it is probably a gray, gray area. We don't know. Uh, we ask oh, Kulkarni, you, you want to go next? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, question, my question is uh, the new system looks to be independent of the zone, right? Just just extending Correct. the question from previous... Correct. There's, there's no, no longer a zone in the new system. Okay, that clarifies. The zone, yeah. yeah, the zone is replaced by the guidance value for all practical purposes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Srinivas? Yeah. yeah. Uh, regarding this... No, uh, Srini, Srini Vedula, I think you got dro dropped off. Uh, why don't uh, yeah. we let Srinivas complete and then you can come in Srini Vedula. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, uh, regarding the occupancy certificate, let me clarify. One of the projects uh, recently completed, a prominent builder uh, near Hormavu, uh, one of my son had uh, purchased an apartment. Even uh, when they, they issued, BBMP issued occupancy certificate and started collecting the tax, property tax. But it was not fit for occupying. Okay, two years they collected. Okay. Then I had to raise this issue with the commissioner and the revenue department, DC revenue, and they uh, refunded that money. Okay. Occupancy, I clearly explained that it should be fit for occupying. Okay. Sure. Uh, no, fully with you on this, Srinivas. No, fully huh? with you on this. There are gray areas in this. Right? Exactly. Let them define. Exactly. Now, that's a different issue, right? Uh, they should yes. be issuing an occupancy certificate only when it's fit yes, to occupy. It is 100% fit, right? fit for occupying. Yeah, but that's a different topic altogether. But Correct. the point that we are making is whenever it logically uh, starts, you know, becoming fit to occupy, that's the day from which yes. the and time starts getting. Another happened. point which other people were discussing is about uh, the pre-construction stage. The land registration, what they'll do is they, they divide the land 
to the number of uh, people who are going to purchase a flat equally and uh, then the construction uh, separate agreement they will take up this is how it is and the kata as you rightly pointed out will be issued only after the completion of uh, the uh, occupying and then they have to do the transfer that builder has to transfer it to the individual names that's how they right. do it and it takes about uh, one year also easily after yeah. occupying sure okay yeah Absolutely. thank you yeah bye yeah yeah she yeah, yeah. she can basically ours is a very old building it's almost 40 45 years old now yeah. how will it affect our uh, new system of taxing nothing your in your case everything remains the same depreciation alone will be capped at 60% depreciation yeah, the maximum at, of 60% at 60% but the guidance value has gone up because we were yeah. the we are in this uh, the prime area of city and our uh, land value has gone up tremendously over and that's so exactly what bnp kind of... is opposing no that actually we, we are preempting the my next part of the topic that's exactly why we yeah. are opposing land uh, value my... we will come to yeah. that right my, now my we have any question the problem is that no no we'll come to that shini yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah. i hope the system is clear i will shortly yeah, come yeah. to the system is clear system is very much clear yeah. very good Uh, so then i hope if this is clear let's move on to that next part which is this system the new system that's being proposed personally speaking for myself and as bnp we completely fully firmly vehemently oppose this new system we will not agree to this new system i met the uh, chief commissioner about 3 4 days back as i all to as i told you all he was effectively saying that i don't care what you say we are going to implement it and i told him then and there if you are going to implement it first i will definitely not pay you do what you want and i will ensure that i'll mobilize tens of thousands of citizens to not pay and he said oh whatever illegal you want to do you do i said what do you mean you are telling me illegal you are not having a elected bbmp council for the last 3 and a half years and in the absence of a bbmp council an elected bbmp council you are taking the decisions it's not only illegal it's unconstitutional and you guys are talking of legality in the whole system i told him absolutely nothing doing we will not pay i told him you do what you want we will do what we want right now he said he will be implementing by 11th march i don't know <laughs> whether he's going to do it we will uh, take the battle right up to their doorsteps but why is bnp opposing uh we have created a petition uh which we want all of you to sign uh somya if it's possible or one of the admins if it's possible for you to uh, copy the link of the petition page and post it on the chat window uh, yeah, people can that. go yeah that will be good to have that so you can go to this we have given a clear explanation of why we are saying no to guidance value as a basis for property tax there are a couple of videos on the right side if you go to the page this was a previous sunday sanjay shrikant jyothe where i had explained the same thing and i also explained in another video why we oppose the uh, tax calculation system but broadly speaking this is available in both english and kannada for all of you kannada kannada dali bekagidre ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರ್ಯಾರಿಗೂ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆಯೋ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಿಟಿಷನ್ ನಾವು ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಮೇನ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಅಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಡೆಸಿಷನ್ ರೀಸನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಅ ಡೆಸಿಷನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಡಿಬೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಂ ಪಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಟುಡೆ ವಿ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ಹಾವ್ ಅ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಂ ಪಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ we do not have corporators they are the people's representatives with regard to matters on bbmp not the state government not the central government not the united nations not anybody else the corporators who we elect are the ones who should be discussing and ultimately deciding whether property tax should increase whether the system should change etc in the absence of an elected bbmp council we are 3 and 1/2 years overdue all we are saying is first conduct the bbmp election elect the 225 corporators let them go and have a discussion and let them present to the city on what are all the discussion points debate points objections let it be discussed and let citizens points let the corporators take input from the citizens 
and let them go and discuss in the council now um, after that if it gets passed that's a different issue altogether we might still have objections but at least it is discussed and debated in an elected council that we are we have elected and people uh, corporators who are representing the people uh, on these matters so that is reason number 1 reason number 2 i think i have already alluded to this guidance value is relevant only for buyers and sellers of property absolutely in many cases guidance value just keeps going up because some mall came up nearby or some metro station came nearby the quality of your civic communities could still be horrible right but the guidance value would have shot up why because uh, you know because of the other amenities that are available nearby and that's got no relevance to it but today you look at the zone right zone bbmp can decide hey in this road for example 24th main in hsr layout it seems to be developed at a reasonable level so they can classify it as c or d they can say richmond road or church street is developed beautifully that is in zone a they can say some place in begur that road is still not even available that can be in zone f makes sense but today that place in begur which is in zone f the guidance value might have shot up because in that area you could have had a mall coming up you could have had some commercial complexes coming up people find it convenient to stay there right uh guidance value has no relevance to property tax at all and these guys have been claiming the uh, chief commissioner and others have been claiming that oh we have implemented this in other cities in karnataka nobody is questioning i don't care if others haven't questioned it doesn't mean that the system is right in uh, all our cultures whether it's hinduism islam christianity there are some horrible practices that have been followed over a period of time at some point people did not question those doesn't make them right let's say a sati system in hinduism a triple talaq in muslim islam uh, system i don't want to bring religion but i just want to uh, explain the context here right uh, there are lots of good practices that exist but there are bad practices that exist in every religion every system just because people at some point accepted it doesn't make it right uh, i would request everybody to go on mute yeah so what you are saying is i don't care who has agreed who has accepted in for definitely a city like bengaluru it's a horrible system i think shrini vedula that's what he was referring to he might have constructed a house in 1970 right and at that time you know it was very very nominal rate at that at that place and over a period of time the civic communities in his area didn't develop but because of the natural development of bengaluru right the uh, system just uh, uh, kept going up and up and up and the guidance value kept going up and up and up now as a senior citizen who's who has no intention of buying or selling a property why should he or she end up paying a ridiculous amount as property tax and for getting no amenities in that area so the linkage of property tax should be to the quality of amenities developed in your area and not to the guidance value guidance value to some extent let's say 10 to 15% might be linked to the quality of the civic amenities but bulk of it is related to other uh, aspects and hence we oppose a guidance value linked system third and fourth are very interesting things we are saying even if we believe that the system is right i will not pay why is that i am going to say there are 30 lakh residential properties in bengaluru hardly about 10 lakh residential properties are actually paying property tax this is data from bbmp i am an honest tax paying citizen if you want to increase tax you first collect money from the defaulters you can't keep increasing the property tax from honest citizens and leave the defaulters because we know how the system works these defaulters are in cahoots with the local revenue officials they will keep paying one small percentage of the property tax payable as a bribe to these people and they keep getting away with that i as an honest tax paying citizen why should i keep getting penalized go after the other 20 lakh defaulters figure out how to curb corruption in your system go after your revenue officials who are engaging in corruption start collecting money from defaulters if you collect money you will have more money that you need so first do that whether you change the system or whether you are increasing it by even 1% i will oppose why because you go after the defaulters first you come back and tell me i don't need 100% complaints you come back and tell me 90% of the 30 lakh 27 lakh properties are paying property tax properly now then you come back and tell me a new system why you need money i am happy to pay at that time if i feel it's justified that is reason number 3 reason number 4 what is happening to the 10000 crores of 
money that BBMP is spending every year. None of us see any improvement in the quality of the civic communities. There is no transparency in the accounts. There is no transparency in the projects. It's all a black hole. We keep paying property tax. We keep paying cesses. And all of this ends up going into the pockets of various people. I don't want to say who is corrupt. Today we know that pretty much all the pro uh, parties that are out there, most of the politicians out there are corrupt. Right? But bring in transparency. At B B BNP, on our website, in fact, whenever you go to this, please go to our citizens portal. On our citizens portal, we have displayed information about all the BBMP projects. If we can do it, we have hacked into the BBMP system. We have taken all that information out. If we can do it, why can't you do it? The reason why you don't want to do it is because the moment you make it transparent, citizens will start asking questions. Do that first. Tell us how you are spending money. Tell us what projects are these, uh, are these uh, budgets being spent on. And after that, you tell me why this money that you are currently collecting is not enough. Why do you need more? Then I will think about whether I need to pay more or not. So in a sense, what is currently happening is money that we are paying is going down the drain, going into people's pockets. Defaulters, they are not go, you know, going after the defaulters. They keep coming back to us. And it's all make merry, right? All these people who are dishonest, corrupt, uh, and all these people who are uh, hoodwinking the system, they, they are getting all the benefits. We, the honest tax-paying citizens, what do we end up? We end up paying the taxes. What do we end up with? We end up paying taxes. And we end up with horrible civic communities in our areas. So what we say is, first, go after the defaulters. Second, please put up all the details in your system. Make it transparent. Third, justify why you need extra money. Then, Please ensure that there's an elected BBMP council. Let there be a discussion. And after that, if you're telling us that your money is being spent properly, all the defaulters we have collected, and after that, this is how we are going to spend your money. This is what we need it for. I have told Chief Commissioner, the first supporter that will come and support you for increasing the property tax is me. Till that time, don't even think about changing the system or increasing the property tax even by 1%. I will protest. I will get tens of thousands of citizens to protest. I would like to leave it at that. I'm happy to take any questions that any of you might have on why am I and why is BNP opposing this new system? And uh, if there are people uh, who have not spoken yet, you want to raise your hand, uh, please do uh, raise your hand and then Srikant uh, Srini here. Yeah, Srini. Hello. Uh, thank a lot for uh, again covering up. I had gone to the website and seen all this. But uh, what has happened is the senior citizens like us, we are really perturbed by whatever the circular which has come. And yeah. uh, second thing is anybody who has also let out even a small poacher, a outhouse or anything, uh, mm -hmm. they are also into a lot of trouble. And lot of the areas that have been declared in our this one, when they gave us recently, they gave us the property ID uh, data. A card was issued to us recently uh, by the BBMP. Okay, in that card they have mentioned certain uh, the the size of the building which is not in this one, and we really don't know who to approach and get it correct uh, corrected because they have mentioned. Any the uh, some uh, uh, guy came for the uh, very young chap and he was collected and he was not even able to write our names properly and he has collected the data based on that the property ID card has been issued. So I want you to highlight this also the data sure. collection those people on the property ID distribution there are a lot of errors in that. How do we address those errors in those property ID documents? Because it will it will boomerang us on today or tomorrow. Yeah, sure. We will we we'll look at that, uh, Shini. But I hope uh, the petition and the points that I made captures all the points absolutely. that you are all objective. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So why not we file a PA? I am ready to be part of the party if it is legally possible. Yeah, so uh, legally, uh, we are uh, actually looking to file a case. We can file a case only when the uh, 
petition, the notification is made final. Uh, there is a team that's working oh. in the background. We have already engaged with lawyers, and the primary contention is BBMP is not authorized to change the system in the absence of an elected BBMP council. That's our primary point. Rest of it, I think they can change the system, uh, which is within the realms of the BBMP Act. They can increase it, which is also within their realms. But we are saying, though you can't do it legally in the absence of an elected BBMP council. So while we are doing this politically and uh, involving uh, citizens, we are also uh, going the legal way in parallel. We'll keep you all updated on that front. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Narsimhan, I am Subarao. Yes, uh, Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, analyzing. And uh, now I understood uh, earlier, I have a different mindset uh, of uh, going a legal way is won't uh, help us. But now after hearing from you, I am also 100% uh, uh, on the same page. Yes, we can go legally. And uh, thank you for analyzing. And uh, I am now, uh, see, almost uh, uh, clear why we need to oppose. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Subara. Let's all collectively, and I request that uh, we haven't yet put out the petition uh, while it's in the public domain. We haven't sent a message out yet asking people to send and, uh, so that will shortly go out and once you all get the petition please forward it on all the groups ask them to you know read through the petition that gives a good idea and let's ensure that we collect 50000 signatures people power ultimately matters or say matters. Yeah. Uh, okay uh, in this regard can i uh, seek some help from you in the same uh, whatsapp messages can you put the link of the petition so that i That's can right. circulate uh, among my groups Yes, yeah, so actually, there is a WhatsApp message. If you're there on our groups, you will get the message. And I want all of you to forward that message. It has all the relevant links for all of you to understand and also to explain to people. Please forward those messages. Uh, 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 yeah, just uh, once more, uh, if it is gone uh, up, uh, if you could be able to paste it uh, freshly now. Uh, now no, as in uh, we have pasted the link to the petition, but uh, uh, we haven't yet sent the WhatsApp message out. That is going to get... Uh, Started from tomorrow onwards. Uh, we okay. just finished the petition today. Uh, you are all among the first to see the petition, right? Okay. So, uh, right. By tomorrow, the me message will start coming on the groups. Please forward it on all your groups, all your friends. Circles. Now, now I am thinking why I can't, uh, why I couldn't uh, spread this message into my groups so that more people yeah. could have joined. Sure, no problems at all. We will, we will yeah. continuously keep communicating on the groups on this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Narayana, you had a question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, agree with your uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, evaluation uh, why we should not uh, oppose this new system. The reason Rather is why one, we should oppose uh, the new system. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, why we should oppose. I mean, definitely, I agree because I do see a lot of uh, discrimination in one particular area. I mean, where the land uh, value is uh, uh, the same, but uh, the 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 uh, FA, that is tax. Uh, what do you call um, evaluation uh, between the two buildings are different in the same area. If it is uh, six thousand for uh, brigade and it is uh, uh, eight thousand for uh, shoba tulip like that. Okay. Correct. So that is there, and again, uh, it is. Yeah, in fact, it's an important point that you bring up, Narayana. Uh, yeah. uh, you are absolutely right. Guidance value sometimes is also linked to how good your own property is, how well you have maintained your property, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And now that you get the benefit of it because let's say you live in an apartment where you have maintained it well, and the BBMP actually gives you a higher guidance value. Now, the road that you are living, it's the same road for you as the neighboring apartment or anybody else. If your guidance value is higher, why should you pay more property tax for the same? Exactly, we are paying more uh, as a part of the maintenance in order to maintain the building. Correct. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, uh, just be, I mean, we are spending money for the maintenance. So why, on Correct. the other hand, BBMP is keen in uh, having a different uh, guidance value for uh, well-maintained property or something Correct. like that. If it is uh, just the you. neighbor building, why that there should be a discrimination? Okay. No, absolutely. In fact, you are yeah. getting penalized for maintaining a good building. Right? Yeah. Essentially, what they are saying is if your building is maintained bad, we will charge you less property tax. And if your building is maintained well, for which you have spent a lot of money, you know, you will be taxed more also. Right? In fact, it should Correct. be the other way around. 
but and you know, second, second point uh, yeah. exactly and second point uh, is uh, definitely i mean people who are uh, like senior citizens where they do not have any income they have to they will think twice i mean uh, whether should i sell this property and go for uh, lesser, lesser guidance value uh, to avoid these unnecessary taxation which i think definitely will keep increasing year on year yeah. uh, just because of the guidance value and uh, they will not have any extra income unless they i mean sell the property which they cannot do it also correct so agree they have to live there but they have, they, they have, i mean like uh, end up in paying more tax where they do not have extra income from the guidance value because just because the guidance value is appreciated it doesn't mean that it is an income hard cash in their hand for them to pay the tax tax so right agree with you. okay and that's why yeah. we completely oppose any guidance Opposed, value yeah, exactly. property yeah. tax totally agree yeah. with you sir so that is another point uh, yeah i mean uh, yeah I, i would also support this whereas uh, yeah. as you said if some mall comes up uh, next to our building or if our road something is facing the main road and our guidance value goes up it doesn't have any i mean meaning to calculate the property tax i mean just because right. we bought the property some uh, for 20 years or 30 years back it doesn't mean that we have enough have money to i mean pay the tax every year yeah great uh, yeah. by the way harish d has a question the bpp doesn't issue occupancy certificate for residential houses maybe for no i think harish uh, please check this uh, every house uh, when it's a newly constructed bbmp has to finally give a, a either a occupancy or a completion certificate right uh, so there is a certificate that certifies that your building is now uh, you know complete uh, and that's a time from which the property tax starts becoming due right because when do you start calculating your property tax right uh, so every house bbmp ultimately has to give a, a an noc or a, a occupancy certificate or some kind of a completion certificate i don't know what the name for individual houses is but there definitely is a certificate that will be given for completion uh, is there any other question yeah uh, one so more thing for, I mean, commercial, for the for the commercial for commercial independent entities. houses yeah sorry just one minute narayan i'm just going through the uh questions here uh, uh harish has asked what is it for uh, commercial entities uh you can look at that notification i haven't yet gone through the commercial part of it i right now i have gone through the uh, residential of course commercial will be higher but i would expect that even for the commercial uh, uh, enterprises your property tax in the new system will be increasing quite a bit but that's something i honestly haven't done any work on yet uh, so that's something that uh, i will want to put out there Uh, somebody has asked how is it generally calculated for a partially rented house yeah yeah you can use some example with 50% rented and that's a very simple thing uh, if let's say your super built up area is let's say 2000 square foot and you have rented out 50% of it 1000 square foot rented 1000 is owned you can actually declare 1000 uh, square foot as owned 1000 square foot as rented and you will pay at the rate for one uh, at one rate for the 1000 square foot and another rate for the other 1000 square foot so it goes proportion to whatever is owned and whatever is rented uh, so that is as far as that question is concerned uh, sanjay lavakre has uh, asked the question how do we go about pushing back uh, this new proposal i guess that's the agenda for this call sanjay lavakre this was not the primary agenda the primary agenda was to help people understand uh, what the current system and new system is and what we are doing but yes let me quickly cover it's a good question and an important question uh at bnp we are working on four different tracks simultaneously on the one track we are engaging with the government and the officials including the chief commissioner including the deputy cm the revenue minister the uh, cm also uh, and all of them uh, we have reached out to higher echelons in congress and telling them that we will not agree with this system so government engagement is going on one track legal engagement is going on another track where we are engaging with lawyers to potentially file a pil we we'll have to wait till the notification gets finalized before that we can't but we are getting the ground ready for a legal uh, engagement third track is we are engaging with citizens like what we are doing now and one of the key things that we are doing is that petition interestingly we asked we had put out a form asking people to raise objections we were shocked more than 8000 people had filled up that form uh, objecting to the new system so we have the contacts of all these people 
uh, we are going to reach out to all these people to get them to sign the petition so we are now floating the petition we want uh, tens of thousands of people to sign the petition when the government sees numbers behind a petition they will be forced to take action on that so that is number 3 and we are slowly beginning to engage with the media to highlight this uh, whole problem and uh, media also will keep carrying as already started carrying some articles we will keep pushing that uh, further and further so these are the four tracks engagement to the government bbmp and the officials uh, second is the legal engagement the third is engagement to the public and the citizens to raise awareness and get them to uh, support us and fourth is the media engagement and through this collective push we are very confident that we'll be able to reverse this illogical and ridiculous system that bbmp is proposing i hope that gives an answer to that question uh, and i'm just seeing uh, is there any other question on the q and a window that i have not answered or everything was relating to the previous thing so uh, somebody has asked how do we get added to the bnp whatsapp group uh, floyd lazaro has asked this question so floyd what we will do is i think we'll have your email id captured Uh, or what you can do is go to bnp website nammabnp.org uh, there you can uh, given your contact details in the contact us section or on the volunteer section uh, once you give your details our admin will reach out to you and add you to the relevant whatsapp group so i request any of you who are not there on the bnp group to go to nammabnp.org which is a bnp website either on the contact us page or on the volunteer page please enter your details please put in your mobile number and email id our admin a person admin team will reach out to you uh, within a day or two and will add you to the group uh, is there a way for all of us to know the score on a daily basis the number of petition got signed so far absolutely it's a real time system uh, when you log into that page uh, right on top of the page it will tell you how many people have signed it so uh, in the past we have had our petitions garner 5000 10000 15000 signatures but on this one uh, right now only 25 people have signed because uh, we have, we have not even put it out in the public domain yet uh, but starting tomorrow whenever you go to that page you will be able to see how many people have signed it uh, can you share the link to the property tax calculations in the spreadsheet see one thing is uh, i don't generally share spreadsheets because it gets distorted by people in different ways i will see if there is a presentation that can be created and we'll probably put it on the uh, groups um, is property id card being given is the question asked by jayalakshmi uh that's not a no water also bad civic state jay rashmi that's the context of a different discussion we can't uh, uh we don't have the time to discuss that today but yes important points for a different discussion uh shini has said the commercial property tax is more horrible yeah sure case study tomorrow anonymous attendee has said i'll sign the petition uh, karthik v is asking for mic to be allowed karthik i thought you are already uh, okay there are some more people who have raised their hands and Want to allow them to talk, Shridhar? If I may uh, interrupt here, uh, the screenshot of your calculation can be shared as an image, even if yeah, you want. Yeah, sure, to. absolutely, we can do that. Uh, yeah, people are saying I've signed the petition now. Circulate in my community of two hundred plus plot owners. Wonderful, right? So if all of you start doing this, uh, ultimately, I firmly believe that there is one power on earth. that overcomes political power muscle power money power gunda power every power and that is people power if we the people come together if we are able to work together as a group there is no power on earth that's bigger than this power let's show that power let's get the petition signed by more and more people i want in in fact i have put out a challenge to uh, tushar girinath i have told him i will get tens of thousands of citizens to resist this and if they still go ahead with the system i want all of you to support me i am not going to pay property tax in the new system if tens of thousands of citizens refuse to pay they will be forced to reverse it so let's all be together work together first let's right now sign the petition that itself will be a great support for us please circulate it to more and more people we will uh, you know keep you updated on this thank you so much yeah jay lakshmi you want to ask yeah. a question I just wanted to ask about this property ID card, which uh, that's uh, not part of the today's discussion, Jay Lakshmi. It will take in a. Uh, it's okay. a different. So, we'll probably have a separate. I thought session. that we are talking about the tax. So you said that ID and the tax is related. I didn't even no, no, understand no, no. it. I was a little. No, 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 nothing. Shrikan. No, no. There is nothing. There is no linkage between your uh, property, okay. UPOR, or property ID card and the property tax. 
I don't have a property ID uh, card, uh, okay. but I still pay my taxes. So the two things are completely okay. unrelated. Okay. Sorry, didn't get it. That is what I wanted to check with you. Sure. Okay. Thank no you. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, Frank. Uh, can you want to go next? Um, yeah, I, we have tried to circulate this uh, link uh, for submitting the forms in the groups that I am a part of, the WhatsApp groups, but some uh, thinking that I'm promoting a political group. So to dispel that uh, uh, concern, uh, whatever points that you mentioned as reasons why you're objecting, they are so logical and so precise. I would appreciate if you could make a very short video only of that and also how you're planning to push back the full track. Actually, uh, Frank, just to give you a quick answer, if you go to the petition on the right side, there are links to two videos. There is okay. one video of mine where I'm explaining why the system is illogical. Okay, great. Uh, you then can I'll send, that, you can send that. the link of that video and then people can start viewing that. Perfect. But this is a great job that you've done. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. I think a few others had raised their hand. Uh, any of you can unmute and... Uh, yeah, Karthik, you want to go next? Sorry, I think I might have muted Karthik by mistake. Karthik, I think you wanted to ask something, you can unmute. Yeah, uh, th thanks, Srikant. This has been an excellent discussion. Thanks for that. I, I have raised this yeah. point earlier with a good friend of mine, uh, uh, Vishnu, Vishnu Reddy, in this group. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, clearly, clearly, the root cause seems to be the no elected council, right? I think, I think this yeah. discussion came up earlier as well about the PIL uh, to be filed because I think courts have also intervened, but you know, the elections have not happened and we don't know when this is going to happen. Yeah. So is there any movement over there that you're aware it's again of? It's a very complicated uh, subject, Karthik. Uh, BNP is a petitioner in a case that's going on in the Supreme Court itself against this, right? But our judiciary, the less said about it, I don't want to get myself, you know, uh, getting into contempt of court or anything of that sort. But uh, I'm left extremely disappointed with our own judiciary. So I'm discussing with people, even though there's a case going on uh, for three and a half years, we have not found any resolution there. Uh, I intend to take the battle at a larger level also. Uh, so we will fight that battle as a topic for discussion on a different date, different time. Thank you. Narayan <clears throat> yeah. I mean, when... Uh... They did, I mean, uh, like said, oh, they, have, they have opened it for public for their uh, uh, feedback on the new tax system, okay. Are they considering uh, analyzing what uh, what are the things in that and then, uh, I mean, um, uh, taking it into account for whether to bring in or just hiding or it's only a, like... Um, Nothing, it's a very simple kind system, Narayan. Business. It's a very simple mm -hmm. thing, Narayan. They need money. And if there is a, a flock of people who are to be milked, why don't we milk them more and more? And right now, the reality is that the government coffers are running empty. And they don't have money and they want money at whatever cost from whoever they can make the money from. So, in fact, uh, I, I met, I met uh, you know, on, on some other topic, uh, on the fire safety issue, I met somebody senior. Uh, same thing, they are charging ridiculous amounts of money for fire inspection and all, which is ridiculous. And we ask, why are you doing this? They said, Government coffers are running empty. We need more money. Hey, we are not people to be milked. As in, you do it logically and you do it systematically, right? I'm not here to, you know, pay whatever you ask me to do. So that's the problem that's going on. So, but that's again a different political discussion altogether. Right now, there is no logic to the current system. If they increase the taxes, the zone rates in the current system, people will come up and protest. So they're trying to do something very cute. They're saying, oh, no, no, this, uh, this system, new system doesn't change the tax. It's not much. So in the name of introducing a new system, people won't even realize that uh, their taxes are higher and they try to see uh, if they can push it through. That's effectively what is being tried out. But, you know, we are not going to allow that to happen. Yeah. Anybody else has any other question? Uh, yeah, that's uh, instead of uh, question. Oh, sorry, I one minute. Uh, your, uh, yeah. Yeah, one minute, Subara. Floyd has asked, can you please yeah, share uh, the BNP page to ensure we access the right site? Uh, Somya, can you please uh, post the link to the BNP website uh, uh, and also the campaign campaign page? I think it's already been done. Uh, Numberbnp.org uh, for you know uh, people to go. If you can put it on the chat window or the Q&A window, that would be appreciated. Uh, that will be appreciated. So. 
yeah uh, uh, in this regard uh, uh, mr nasiman your efforts are uh, really uh, grateful and uh, see this is uh, uh, really uh, helpful uh, like us helpful sure and it is a very so logical your discussion is very logical very logical yeah. and uh, see I, no i don't want to score a political brownie point, point here right. uh, Yeah, I don't want yeah, to score yeah. a political yeah, yes, brownie sir. point here, yeah. Subbaraj. But yeah, I can yeah, tell yeah, you that yes, whatever yes. we do in BNP, Bengaluru Navanirmana Party, we do it professionally, we do it logically, yeah. we do it in a structured manner, we do it sensibly, we do it along with citizens. We take inputs from citizens. We explain why this is the case or why we are opposing, and only then we take up matters. We are not illogical like many of the other parties and all. So that's something that we pride ourselves on. And thank you for bringing that out as well. Yeah. Uh, just uh, see, uh, the higher government cannot take away the rights and uh, duties and responsibilities of a quasi government, like local yeah. government. Correct. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I I want us to you know sort of be careful. DBMP is not a quasi government. DBMP is a government. There are three levels of government in this country: central government, state government, and the municipal government or the panchayat uh, government. this is a form of government approved by our constitution it's not a quasi government these are people elected representatives elected by the same people who elect the mps and mlas so it's absolutely oh, not a, a quasi government or a civic body or anything bbmp oh. is the city government i think we should all be proud oh. to say that and we should hold the bbmp as a government and account and hold them accountable for everything that happens oh. on this okay so no other government can take away the rights and responsibilities of uh, uh, one government absolutely central government cannot take away the rights of the state government the state government cannot take away the rights of a municipal government bang on and thanks for bringing that point up uh, subaru so we all need to know that right and yeah, first thing yeah. that we need is we want a government at the city level without a government don't you dare do anything which changes the status quo otherwise we'll keep protesting thank you thank you very much yeah anybody else has any other questions we have about 4 minutes left to go to 6:30 by which we'll wrap up uh i'm just seeing the q and a window if there is anything else i think the link to the bnp website is there the link to the petition page is there in the chat window in the q and a window um the whatsapp messages will start coming from tomorrow onwards so please look at it uh, if any of you have any doubts please post your message on on the group uh, or see the read the petition there are a couple of videos link video links also you can go through that so everything is out there right let's approach this in a sensible and logical manner uh, i am happy to take any last question that might come up if at all there is any okay nalini praveen has raised her hand nalini you can unmute and you can ask your question uh it's not a question i am very happy that you're doing a you know honest and sincere job and god bless you thank you so much nalini and thank you all i'm i'm happy to uh, get all the good wishes you know it's a team bnp we have a wonderful team starting from the governing council to the leadership team to the core team members to the volunteers and all the supporters that you have that you all are right that's what keeps us going as well so let's just be at it uh, step by step and keep working on it thank you all for that uh is karnataka the only city that is going through the new tax system for guidance value i understand that mumbai also has a guidance value system i'm not very sure but most of the other states do not have a guidance value based system right now uh, the shital has asked this question uh they say that oh there should be a capital value based system the zonal system that's currently in use is also a capital value based system only let them not uh, um, you know misguide you on this they will say that oh guidance value is a capital capital value based system even the current unit area value is also a capital value based system only right so uh, so that way uh, karnataka is one of the few states very few states that seems to have gone based on guidance value i think maharashtra or mumbai specifically might be going through that uh, but uh, most of the other states do not have this guidance value based system uh, somebody has asked link to the place where we can find zone mappings please uh, we will again we have put it out on the groups uh, earlier we will again put it out so 
Srinivasan, you will get it on our WhatsApp groups for the uh, zone mappings as well as the guidance value. Uh, Anil D'Souza has a question, will this be calculated automatically on the website? Uh, current system, property tax, yes, it automatically gets calculated. New system, I have no idea. Are they planning to calcul you know, calculate it automatically or is there some other thing? That I don't know. Right now, I'm just telling you what the notification, draft notification tells us, which is not even final, right? So we will wait and watch to see how that goes. And based on that, we will we will see what we need to do. Uh, I guess that's about it with regard to all the questions. Thank you so much to all of you for uh, patiently hearing me out, uh, for you know spending time on a Sunday evening to know what the system is, how is it changing, what does it mean for us, why are we opposing it. And I sincerely hope that each and every one of you will support it first by signing the petition and by forwarding the petition link and subsequently the WhatsApp message that you'll get. Please forward it on all the groups. Please send it in your friend circles. Let's make it viral. Let's ensure that every citizen in the city knows that we will not put up with nonsense. If you give us nonsense, so far we've been putting up with a lot of, lot of, lot of nonsense. It's time to tell BBMP to show them 